Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I mock it. Well, kind of, sort of, I give you my opinions on it. I think it's real fun, especially this early in the draft process, like real early in the draft process, but taking a look at other people's perspectives, um, maybe some of the guys that they're high on, it just gives us a wider array of prospects to take a look at going into the college football season. But today we're taking a look at Pro Football Network's own Oliver Hodgkinson. Hopefully I said that right. But uh, what's crackalacking? It's your boy Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you appreciate the content. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Or let me know some of the guys that you're high on, that you got your eye on going to the college football season. I will do... Um, like preseason rankings uh, for the NFL, the 2022 NFL draft in the next uh, like month, month and a half. I've done a real big deep dive um, coming into uh, this summer, more so than I did last year. So you're going to get a lot of prospects when that comes out. But they're using Vegas betting odds. So if you're mad about the draft order, take it up with Vegas. I don't want to hear about it. But Detroit Lions, their first overall, they go Spencer Radler. For the most part, he is like the unanimous number one quarterback on a lot of people's boards. Occasionally, you'll see like Sam Howe. But for the most part, it's Spencer Radler. The dude's, he's got the arm talent. Detroit, if you're picking first overall, you're probably going to just take the best quarterback on the board. Jared Goff, I really highly doubt that they're that he's the franchise quarterback, especially if they're picking first overall. So they're probably going to move on and get their franchise guy. And then the Houston Texans, right? Yes, the Houston Texans are next up here. They go Sam Howe. And then we'll get to the Jacksonville's pick in a sack. But they go Sam Howe. Like I said, he's unanimous. At some cases, you'll see him number one. But for a lot of people, he's their number two. Um, the dude's got the arm strength. Now he's working with a lot less talent, at least playmaker-wise, at North Carolina. The offensive line, though, probably one of the better offensive lines in all of college football. It's a real veteran line. But it'll be interesting to see what he does with uh, a lot of his playmakers now gone into the NFL. But, yeah, Texans, let's be honest, it seems dim. Like, David, Davis Mills, yeah, give Davis Mills a shot. He, at the end of the day, he is a third-round pick. He is not a second overall pick. This is the most... And I know some of y'all be like, well, what about Deshaun Watson? He wants out there and we don't know his future just yet. It doesn't look good. Um, or at least in terms of Watson coming back to Houston. But at the end of the day, the quarterback position is the most valuable position on the field. So yeah, I'd rather invest in the second overall pick, the second best quarterback in this class than Davis Mills, who ended up being a day two guy. And then the uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they ended up going with Kayvon Thibodeau. Might be the best pros best non-quarterback prospect in this draft class. The dude's unstoppable. He they hardly took him off the field. Like pass rush, I'm uh, like if you think about it, like outside, like maybe they could upgrade parts of the offensive line. Yeah, but I don't know if this is necessarily the draft for that. At least to do that at the top like five it's kind of it's kind of difficult i don't think there's that guy there there's not like a tristan Wirfs or a jedrick wills or mckay becton in this draft class but Thibodeau, i know some of y'all be like they got clavon chase on yeah that's nice but let's be honest let, let's get some pass rush in there just in case things don't work regardless it, 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 it's a great pick it, i mean you can make the case for Derek stanley but i mean they really invested in the secondary um this past off season and then going to the Philadelphia Eagles, Derek Stanley. Very interesting. This is probably, I think this is actually Philly's pick. Because um, they're probably going to have three first round picks next year. Because uh, of the Carson Wentz trade and because the Dolphins. You're welcome, Eagle fans. But they go Derek Stanley. Yeah, pro like corner this is a need. Uh, they brought in Zach McPherson. But I think he's more of a slot guy. Uh, you can make a case for quarterback. If they are picking fourth overall, Jalen Hurts, things didn't look great, probably, and I would probably try to go quarterback. I might be willing to take a shot on a guy with maybe a high upside, like a uh, Malik Willis out of Liberty. Um, he's not necessarily a – he's not Trey Lance in this class. He was more highly sought-out recruit coming out of, coming out of um, high school. 
but I think the ball placement, at least when it came to the one season <laughs> Trey Lance played, was much better. But Derek Sneedley's phenomenal, dude. He's a freak athlete. Uh, he was real beat up last year, and just LSU in general, the defense was just not great. Uh, I, I expect a big rebound year for him. He's probably going to be the number one corner off the board. Moving on to, yes, the Cincinnati Bengals. They go, this is interesting, Kyle Hamilton. Uh, safeties normally don't go that early, at least in recent memory. Hamilton, probably the exception. He is a blue chip prospect. The guy has been phenomenal coverage. A lot of people might point out, oh, his missed tackle rate's not great, but a lot of that's him coming downhill with the head of steam. And he goes for the haymaker instead of just taking the nice little jab, You know, if you know what I'm saying. He's looking to take some guy's head off rather than just getting the clean wrap-up tackle. Very coachable. I'm not worried about that. Uh, pairing him up with... Uh, what is it jesse bates there that would be actually pretty sick uh and i mean what are the other options here if you're looking for a blue chip prospect like oh like i know a lot of people might bring up offensive line but i don't think there really is a top five offensive tackle in this class uh you could may like a lot of people will say evan neal but i don't think he's on that level um there's not a well they don't need receiver why bring up receiver if they don't need receiver but yeah yeah a bit interesting bit interesting i don't mind the pick though i, I really like him as a prospect going on further okay uh Kair elam out of florida going to the jets they're probably gonna honestly they're probably gonna be picking in the top 10 uh it's a young team i know they're full of potential but it's a young team first year head coach well yeah first year head coach here um they're they're probably gonna be in the top 10 it doesn't mean they're a bad team just means they're a young team they're building um they need help on the outside bryce hall is kind of a question mark we don't know what we have in him just yet uh kair elam the dude's stupid athletic he's really he might be a better prospect potentially than cj henderson who also went in the top 10 so i think there is a good case to be made that he is a top 10 corner like this cornerback class is nuts and going on to pick seven here the new york giants they go with Kenyon green is actually see i have him listed as tackle he's gonna be moving to the left tackle position um but i mean he could very well end up being the interior guy i would say he's a top 10 pick on the interior though that's kind of wild um you would think why would they why would they because this isn't the bears pick why would they stick with why would they stick with daniel jones why not take a shot on a malik willis uh who i assume is the next quarterback on uh their board on pro football network's board uh maybe they have Kedon, uh Kedon slovis potentially but yeah that puzzles me like green's great great prospect very athletic i think he'll be able to hold up on the outside but i just find that interesting and then the Atlanta Falcons go Drake Jackson. This team needs pass rush. Like, they got Dante Fowler. He is a good edge, too. That's about it. That's why he's – you're paying him elite edge rush money, and he's giving you all of, what, eight sacks, ten sacks over the course of that time. Yeah. Come on. Um, yeah, I don't spoon – I think Drake Jackson, I think he's my number two edge right now as well. Just because, like, the dude's – his high end is like really good. Like I think he could, ch like you could challenge um, Thibodeau when it comes to Dr Jackson's high end. You just got, we just got to see more of it, you know. So that'll be interesting. Uh, you could make a case for quarterback here. I guess they almost thought about going with quarterback in this past draft, but ah, it is what it is. It is what it is. The Denver Broncos go Malik Willis. I'm totally cool with this. Yo, I love that picture because Liberty's actually what they're. They're probably like three hours out from my hometown back in Virginia. But um, Malik Willis, the dude's got a stupid strong arm. He could be a little bit better with his ball placement. The accuracy is not like stellar, but by no means is it uh, like terrible. Uh, you could make the case he's similar to like a Josh Allen in regards to him as a prospect. Uh, a lot of people also made the same comparison with Trey... Um, trey lance 
but I think Trey Lance was a bit further along than uh, Malik Willis. We, honestly, a lot that a lot of that could change this season, depending on how, uh, how he plays. But he is probably easily like in terms of his potential, sky's the limit. So if I'm the Broncos, yeah, get Drew Locke the heck out of there. Get yourselves a quarterback. Why aren't you trading for a a Ron, dude? All right, moving on to uh, the next team. It's the Giants pick again. So now they go quarterback. Okay, they go Desmond Ritter. All right, so I was going to make it overhyped prospects going into the season. I still might, and I'm not going to lie y'all. Ritter was going to be on that list. Um, I think this guy is so overhyped. Like, the more I watch him, because I get it. The guy's got the arm strength. He's got the wheels, but he plays in a very RPO heavy scheme. It's a very simplistic, um, simplistic scheme at that. His accuracy is not that good. Not that good. When I talk, when I said Willis, you know, his accuracy, it's not great. Like Ritter's is, it's just not there. Unless we see a big improvement there. I can't see him being a first rounder. Like I think day two is probably about right. Maybe like third or fourth round. Just and that's probably where I would have had him uh, if he came out of last year's draft, but I don't think what changes by him returning is. I guess he could prove he's more accurate. I mean, yeah, I guess Senior Bowl. That's a good point, actually, brought up by Pro Football Network. That's good. That's a good point. So I don't have a lot of faith in him being a first rounder because I mean, currently I only got three first round grades, uh, three quarterbacks with first round grades. So yeah. Then Kadon Slovis, man, he's probably one of the most accurate quarterbacks in college football. Uh, but he's kind of been known as the Kirk Cousins at this point in college football. The guy shows up in the fourth quarter. Those first three quarters, though, oh, it sucks that they happen. Um, he did have a – like. I'm hoping that he comes out this uh, upcoming season. It looks a lot better. Probably will, honestly. He's not a bad prospect. Uh, just, he doesn't have like the ideal arm strength you want, but you don't necessarily need that in the NFL. So we'll see Washington. They do need a quarterback or at least a future quarterback. They do got the Fitz magic back there. And then the Las Vegas Raiders. They go to Marvin Leo. He's another, this is another cat. That's a blue chip prospect. Like he plays out on, he plays on the edge for Texas A&M at 290. I think this guy could literally like be a monster coming into the league. Like, watch out for him, man. It, it, this dude's freaky athletic, freaky strong, stupid good explosiveness. Um, he should be a top 10 pick. Like, I don't normally get excited about defensive interior players. Like, I'm I'm excited about Leal. Like, so I don't fault the Raiders here for this pick. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess you can make the case for a quarterback, but it, it kind of is what it is. Like, Derek Carr's a top 15 quarterback. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's ever going to be elite, but I think he's good enough to, like, lead your squad. Uh, let's keep this train rolling. And then, oh, wow, the Carolina Panthers. They're going Akem Ikwanu? Uh, Ikwanu? I suck with names. He currently plays left tackle there at NC State, but he's going to be playing a guard. Like, uh, he's one of the best run blockers uh, in all of college football. Like, for a guard, like, if because he's going to be moved to guard. He's kind of like the Mekhi Becton of guards. S like physically just very overwhelming and stupid athletic for the position. Um, I think this is a bit high for him. I think I, I have a second round grade on him. Uh, just because, again, it's an interior player. Those guys, it's just they're a little less, that position's a little less valuable. And I don't think, um, uh, I don't think a chem here is... Quentin Nelson-esque, so. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Minnesota Vikings, they go George Karloftis out of Purdue. I like this guy. He, if he had, if he kind of like comes, like comes back, uh, like kind of regains that freshman year, uh, I guess, production, like, yeah, the guy's going to end up being a first rounder. He's just, a, he's a super strong power rusher, man. The guy is really good, really good. Uh, it's just last year he kind of dealt with injuries from bulk of the year. So Vikings going edge rusher against someone opposite because they, they invested a lot in the position, I guess, recently. But it's a lot of like 
third like late day two day three picks there so if you could get someone really good across from uh daniel hunter because honestly like i don't have faith in patrick jones they also have uh dj wodum who's i think more of a rotation guy so i don't mind them do going uh doing this then here comes Evan Neal. I'm surprised Evan Neal didn't go actually a little earlier. You see him go a bit earlier in most uh, mock drafts. The guy is a mammoth, and he actually moves very well for his size. I think he moves to the left side. I'm not positive about that um, this year at, at Bama. I don't know about Arizona Cardinals taking him. They have Josh Jones there in the way, like in the wings if they don't want to bring back uh, Kelvin Beachum. So that, for me, that pick doesn't make sense. But um, no, nah, Evan Neal, like, could end up being real good, man. We're gonna we're gonna find out a bit more. Like, part of me wants to like, like the dude dominated at the right tackle last year. I can't really say much more than that. Like, part of me thought it was thinking maybe he's more guard, but nah, dude. Like, if the guy put up great production there at tackle, then give him a shot at tackle. And then here, oh, Carson Strong going to the Steelers. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Uh, I'm not going to dispute the Steelers taking a quarterback. Obviously, Big Ben, he's kind of the Drew Brees part of his career. Carson Strong, you're seeing him appear a lot in first-round mocks. Like, if I was going to pick a guy that's currently outside my first-round projection to kind of sneak in, maybe be the Zach Locke or the Joe – Zach Locke. Zach uh, Wilson or the Joe Burrow of this class, it would probably be Carson Strong. The dude's got a freaking – missile launcher for an arm and he brings back his top receiver romeo dubs um so it sh uh, it should honestly just be rinse and repeat for him this year so yeah carson strong i think you can make a case probably probably is going to end up when um uh, my preseason rankings come out as my fourth overall quarterback uh oh on to the next page i feel like i've been talking forever but y'all enjoy these, so it's A-OK. -okay. New England Patriots get Andrew Booth. This actually surprises me because I would like I, I, I like Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. He's probably my favorite, especially man coverage corner in this class. So uh, you, you I would think he would be a natural fit for the Patriots. A lot of people are really high on Booth. I'm excited to see more of Booth. He was pretty good last year, uh, but I'm excited to see a bit more of him. I'm not... Ex I'm not sold completely yet on him but obviously that could change he could come out and have another banger year uh the chargers go jalen watermeyer i mean they just grab they grabbed trey mckinney in the third round um uh, i don't think we weidermeyer is i don't think we have a first round tight end in this class we don't have a kyle pitts um uh, i wouldn't i don't i would dare to say some of these guys are barely pat like Fryermuth levels of um tight end like watermeyer i would say definitely has way better uh receiving capabilities but uh fryer Booth was an excellent block blocker he's kind of like this total package watermeyer uh not maybe not necessarily but uh he's really good he's probably going to be my top tight end when it's all said and done um uh, at least tight end one tight end two when my rankings come out when my new rankings come out. Because keep in mind, I already have rankings up for you. And they were kind of like my pre-summer deep dive rankings. And then the Dallas Cowboys are going Charles Cross. This is total projection. I get it. Charles Cross, he was tested a lot in true pass sets last year because just that's Mike Leach and his system. Didn't fare fairly well. Uh, he had a banger game against Alabama, but then he was a real hit or miss throughout the season. And like I think he has the ability to really show out i don't know if he i don't think he's a first rounder though um we're gonna see a lot more of them we'll see but i just don't think he's there yet uh cowboys getting a replacement for uh tyron smith in the future though i uh, don't fault it on to the philadelphia eagles they go i don't know why they would go edge unless this guy's like the top guy on your board you know i like i like zach harris a lot uh, i've been struggling because i'm st I, I really like tyreek smith from ohio state and i think he might be the better prospect like harrison he's got a pretty high ceiling but i think smith might end up being the better prospect it's real close both those guys are really good uh but they invested a lot like recently they got milton what milton williams they brought in patrick johnson um i mean they could end up shedding a lot of contracts go into rebuild mode uh so yeah, i guess it is what it is 
Tennessee Titans go with Christian Harris. He's like everybody's top tight end or top linebacker right now. I kind of like flip between him and Mike um, Mike Jones, the former Clemson linebacker now moving to LSU to play more of a traditional linebacker role because he was kind of playing the Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons role there at Clemson. But Christian Harris, stupid athletic. Like he's got it. It's just I want to see him. I just I don't know. I want to see him better in coverage. Um, I I think he was he's definitely was a better he was a better linebacker last year than Dylan Moses. Uh, I just want to see him does like trust his eyes a bit more, man. Cause like I don't think he has a problem seeing when uh, when where the play is going. I just don't think he trusts himself. Like I think there's a lot of second guessing there. But I don't know. We'll see, man. The dude's stupid athletic, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Tennessee Titans, though. Grabbing literally another Alabama linebacker to replace. Uh, I'm assuming this would be Evans. Or Evans? Yeah, because he is he's not been great. Uh really hope they uh decide to extend uh Jayon Brown because he's probably the best linebacker there in Tennessee. Uh, another another tackle coming here since Eric uh Fisher is on a one-year deal. They they're drafted Rashid Walker out of Penn State. I'm not that high on him. He doesn't show up in the big games, and really his play is just kind of so-so. I get it. He's got some good size. He's got uh he's just got that physical profile. He's got um decent enough athleticism, but I don't see it. I don't see it. Maybe that changes this year, but last year I just I wasn't that impressed. Let's see. We got the Jets here. Second pick. Uh, so first they went with Kair Elam. And now they would go with Kingsley Anagbar. Or Anagbar. Uh, out of South Carolina. This guy's a bull in a china shop. Like, a ton of ability. Still a bit raw, man. Still learning. To, like, he doesn't have exactly a full box of pass rush moves. I think he's got very violent hands. Very strong hands. He could obviously use his hands a lot better, though. Uh, but... Uh, this guy i think there's a case to be made like he's gonna be flying up a lot of people's uh charts just because of the immense physical uh upside that he has uh i even think pff mike mike renner has him like as his second uh edge i'm not there i'm not there you do i'm a big jack uh drake jackson guy uh but yeah no this is probably a guy to get get familiar with this dude's name he might have he might pop off and then the Saints go Chris Olave. I think this is the first receiver to go, actually. Um, this year's receiving class is interesting. And honestly, this is probably about the range uh, these guys should go. Olave, he's a burner. Great route runner. I don't think he's great after the catch. But it is what it is. Saints, uh, they would literally... I'm not going to lie to y'all. Uh, you know what? No, he'd be a good compliment to Michael, Michael Thomas. Because they were, they've really been looking for someone that could really stretch the field. Traquan Smith just never became that. So yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of cool. And then the Browns go with Maja Sanders out of Cincinnati. Yo, keep a look out for this guy. He's a bit stringy, you know. I think he could put a little bit more mass on. He he does seem to be a bit more, a uh, bit leaner, leaner. There we go. Uh, but this dude's explosive. Like, he could have been a day two guy if he decided to come out last season. So, yeah, first round, I could definitely see it. This is a very good edge class. So, watch out. There's a lot of good prospects here. But, yeah, Sanders, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, who, who does Cleveland have out at, on the edge? Yeah, just keep improving that defense, dude. Can you imagine? Oh, gosh, yeah, get... Get uh, Garrett someone solid there on the outside. Because Clowney, we don't know, man. He's on a one-year deal. We'll see. And then we have Miami Dolphins. They go Tyler Linderbaum. All right, I ain't going to lie. I, I kind of love this pick. Tyler Linderbaum is, is my top interior lineman. He's a bit undersized, but he's probably the most athletic interior player on the offensive line. Technically sound. He gives up nothing. He's probably one of my favorite. He's a my guy. He's one of my favorite players in this class. The Dolphins. Ted Cars, he's no longer there. I thought he was a solid tight end or solid center. They decided to part ways with him. Um, or he was just on a one-year deal. So they just didn't bring him back. They brought him Matt Skura. That ain't nothing special, let's be honest. So I, I don't mind this pick. I like this pick. 
The Baltimore, Baltimore Ravens go Zion Nelson. This one's stupid interesting because they do have J uh, Jawan James. They got Alejandro Villanueva. But as Oliver put it here, they're mere band-aids. So he doesn't have much faith in those guys because uh, James ain't playing next year anyway. But Zion Nelson, you'll watch out. Former tight end. Got wrecked his freshman season. He's been putting on weight. Last season, he looked phenomenal. Like, I really think this is a guy that will sneak into that first-round conversation. I got him as a fringe first-rounder right now. Uh, and he's and even better. He's at a da you, baby. Da you. So, yeah, watch out for this cat. Like, he was a very good last year. He's stupid athletic. He could put a little bit more meat on his bones. I still think he's sub-300. Not positive about that, though. And then Traylon Burks going to the Lions. I kind of like this. He kind of operates mostly out the slot, but he's a big receiver. He gets, de I think, decent enough separation. He's phenomenal at the catch point. He's currently my top wide receiver. I'm kind of in love with this cat. Very strong hands. He proved he could do it vertically. Uh, he's not necessarily like a complete route runner yet, but I think he definitely expanded that route tree last season. So, yeah, watch out for this cat. Get them like the Lions get in. Um, playmakers shouldn't be a surprise. Really, they they have no one. They literally have no one. What Amon Ross St. Brown? We don't. You don't even know what you have in them yet. So yeah, we'll see. You, you can, <laughs> well, who do they also got? They got uh Quintez Cephas, something like that. Come on, <laughs> the Green Bay Packers. They go receiver. So this has to be, has to be a like fantasy because we know they don't do that uh but they go with garrett wilson i kind of i kind of like him a little bit better than olave just because i think he's better after the catch i think he does a couple of things better than olave but both are very close um so yeah i mean this would be a good addition especially if they might not bring back deandre uh or Devonte adams because well, is this contract at, up at the end of this year? P perhaps? Potentially? I don't know. Buffalo Bills, they get Piran Winfrey or Perion Winfrey. I don't think he's first level or first round level of talent. Like the dude's probably one of the best like interior pass rushers in this class. It's just he doesn't play the run. And we saw what happens when the team doesn't think you play the run well. Christian Barmore, that's what happens. You fall the second round. And Oklahoma, they really take him off the field in run, um, when they think when in running situations. And, yeah, I just want to see him more on the field for that. So he's an interesting one to watch, but he's got really good get off. And then Isaiah Spiller going to the Buccaneers because you know they had to include a running back in the first round. Uh, Spiller's not probably not going to be my top back. I like toss and turn between him and Bryce Hall. Brees Hall. It's probably going to end up being Brees Hall, though. Phenomenal. Spiller's really good in his own right. I think he runs a bit high, though. Because, uh, what, he's like 6'2", right? 6'1", 6'2". He's kind of tall for a running back. And when you run high, not always great. You kind of want to get down, have a low center of gravity. But it is what it is. Spiller, I think he's a solid... Uh, he'd be a... He's gonna be. He's a solid NFL back, but he's ain't first round worthy. He might be honestly for for me, maybe a maybe a third rounder. Uh, but that's just because I'm a harsh when it comes to running backs. If you ain't new to the channel, then you already know. All right, so with the Chiefs, they go with seven banks, seven banks straight up. Um, he's got the length. He's got the athleticism. He plays in a defense that plays a lot of man like he's got everything working for him to be a first rounder it's just let's be honest he didn't play well last year i always go back to the bama game i got the stats like burnt into my head now because they're just so jarring how he did against ohio or against alabama he allowed 11 receptions on 11 targets for i think it was like 133 yards and three touchdowns, two of them being to Devontae Smith. You probably think that's, that ain't half bad, you know. That's He was the Heisman winner. The next, Najee Harris, the running back beating you. The running back beating you, get it together. So unless he has a big year, then I don't see him being a first rounder unless, you know, some team Damon Arnett's uh, him into the first round. But real interesting. I kind of want to go through. This is uh, – 
their early NFL draft big board. Uh, this was done May 8th, though. So, like, two months ago. Maybe I don't want to go through it. Oh, we'll go through it for fun real quick. Have this little be a little bonus content for y'all. Thibodeau. Wow, Hilton. And Neil above Stanley? That's wild. Drake Jackson. Yeah, a lot of people are high on him, man. Like I said, his upside's huge. Uh, Leo's real good. Elam. Rasheed Walker. What is this? Get this nonsense out of here. Like, yeah. All right. Like, I'll concede a little bit. It could happen. It could happen. I don't see it happening. It's like a 2% chance. Alave. I'm surprised Spencer Radler is this low. Then they got Burks, Lofkus. How you have a tight end this high? I don't even think before, like, the 2020 season, I had Kyle Pitts that high. I think Kyle Pitts was, like, 13th or 15th on my overall board. And he is a far better prospect than Weirermeyer. Not to take anything away from him. He's a good prospect in his own right. It's just he's not Kyle Pitts. Like, Kyle Pitts is, like, you ain't going to see a prospect like that for maybe another 10 or 20 years. Then we got Garrett Wilson. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Sam Howell this low, too. Like, I get it. The quarter, Like, I really think Sam Howell, I would rather say he's more of a top 10 quarterback, while Radler is, like, for sure top, for me, top three, top five. Christian Harris, uh, it's still a bit high. There's a Mod Gardner, though. My boy, Sauce. Andrew Booth. Desmond Ritter, man. People are going to hate that I'm so low on him. Ventrell Miller, man. This is a guy I actually really like, but he's probably more of a third, fourth round guy. He just doesn't have the length, man. He's really like a Troy die without the length. Brees Hall. That's pretty high, dude. I don't think I was this high on any of the runbacks in the last year's class, and I th thought it was a better class. Uh, then they have Isaiah Spiller. Yeah, I would have put, like, because I love Travis Etienne, Javante Williams, Najee Harris. Those are, like, my top three. And I don't think – I think I had – in my final big board, Travis Etienne being my top back was like 37th overall. So Malik Willis, I'm probably putting him a little higher just because of the upside. And Maja Sanders, I like him too. Uh, Linderbaum, big fan. I get why Seven Banks is so high on people's boards. I just, I need to see it before I believe it. Uh, Justin Ross, again, a guy I need to see before I really could put him in the first uh again he's really coming back from a like what they fused his spine i think fused a couple discs something like that so yeah i really need to see it before i uh believe it charles cross i'm probably gonna be way lower on him than a lot of other guys bubba bolden i don't know i'd put jordan battle above bolden and also like was it brandon joseph the northwestern cat i'm really high on let's see drake london yo if you checked out my wide receiver rankings I really like London a lot. People kept telling me what, asking me what you think about it, what you think about. It. I was like, I haven't really checked him out yet. Watched him. A lot of potential. Josh Job, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Uh, I mean, this is the second round area. I think that's about where he's at. Aiden Hutchinson, uh, yeah. We'll, I feel this is more his area. What else we got going on? Slovis. Wow, they low on Slovis. I need to check out Obin Easy. AZ? I need to check him out. I got a buddy that's uh Tyler, if you're watching. I'm talking about you, bud. You probably aren't though. Uh he keeps hyping up uh some of the guys from TCU. He's a big TCU fan. And I really think this is the cat he's talking about. He also mentioned a edge rusher I probably need to look out for. David Bell, yeah, I like that. Uh, this is a line, linebacker. Watch out for this guy. He only had four starts last year, so it's very small sample size. But if he could replicate what he did last year, watch out. This guy could end up being the top uh, linebacker in the class. John Mechie, I do feel like he's a bit more. I need to see more uh, from him. In terms of after the catch, he has drops, stuff like that. Sam Williams, I haven't checked out. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Ooh, throw that guy on the list. Uh, Strong, Lucas. Lucas probably one of the most tested uh, pass protectors in this class. Guaranteed a lot of people are going to have a nog bear uh, in their top 32. Jared Patterson, I like him a lot too. I feel more maybe like... Maybe 50, outside of 50. I'm not going to harp on that. Uh, Jordan Davis, for me, he's just like the pass rush ain't there. He feels like a third rounder. 
Uh, Cade Orton, though, yo, straight up. Watch out for this cat. This tight end class is a little weird. Like, it, it feels deep. It feels deep. Let's see some of the guys they did not include. Zion Johnson, too, I'm a big fan of. Apparently, he's moving back to guard this year, left guard, so watch out. Matt Corral. A lot of people are loving Morris, man. We'll see at Oklahoma. We'll see. Uh, I know Alex from Hail Mary Podcast really likes Josh uh, Wild, so look out for that, I guess. Let's see. What else we got going on? Like, CJ Verdell, dude, he's just a hoss at running back. It has no vision whatsoever, though. Uh, that's cool they put Likely here. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, that's it for the video before this sucker gets too long. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It's always much appreciated, much obliged. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Later.